Uh, I guess you might have seen already um, online, so we have this link uh, on the slide if you want to go up this at all, with like some explanation. And the, 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 what we want to do here is mostly give you a bit of the background you will need to yeah, be successful in this sense, right? Some of the kind of very basics of financial market, how these things work, and what kind of trading problems we're trying to solve. Uh, but just to quickly summarize, right, we have this opti book. So it's a simulated exchange. You can program your algos in there to trade against all the other participants. So everybody who takes part in our challenge can also trade against all the other participants. From meeting and meeting in real time, you can see where you stand. Uh, and yeah, that is basically the target. Um, and yeah, it's, it's algos to trading, right? So the idea is that you get the basic idea of how algos to trading works. Um, we will first. Go over the basics, then discuss a bit more about the specific trading problem of the challenge, and if there's time at the end, we will try to do a quick demo of the work. Um, so yeah, so let's just talk about financial instruments, right? So there are different financial instruments uh, that you can trade on an exchange. Uh, there are stocks, which you probably all heard of, right? So stock in a company. Uh, there are futures, there are options, there are ETFs, which are called exchange traded funds. There are bonds, there are, it's a ton of more things. What we are going to focus on here is just stocks and ETFs. So a stock uh, as kind of like having a share in a company and an ETF uh, as like a fund where, which might, for example, be uh, yeah, a fund which has multiple stocks in it, right? So those are the two instruments we're going to focus on here. How, if you look at an exchange, how instruments trade there, that always works through an order book. So the order book is very much at the core um, of how trading works. And you see here in the middle, this is what we call a price ladder. Uh, you usually visualize it like this, so you have increasing prices, where you increase with the tick size. So tick size is kind of like the this criticized prices at which you can trade. So you cannot trade at like uh, 44 euros, 52 cents and a half. Right here you have every one cent. Uh, you might also have one where only at full 10 cents or full euros you can trade. Um, you have bids on the left and offers on the right. Bids means uh, people are willing to buy and ask means people are willing to sell. Right, so you have buyers and sellers, right? And that's how trading happens. So buyers and sellers agree on the price, you have to trade. Um, the best bid is basically the person that is willing to pay the most, right? Who wants to buy at the highest price. And the best ask or best offer is the person who wants to sell for the least amount of money. So those are kind of the most competitive prices that are going to be traded first. And then another thing that is kind of important to look at is the bid ask spread. So that's the difference between the bid and the ask, right? So that kind of the difference that you would need to pay to, uh, yeah, if you want to trade in and out of positions. The further this is apart, the more expensive it is to buy into the sort of sell it compared to like, what they actually were. Um, yeah. Um, and the bid ask spread is slightly uh, related to the concept of liquidity. So in a more liquid market, you have a tighter bid ask spread, so you need to pay less money to uh, get into a position or trade out of a position. Um, and you also have way more uh, volume on the different levels. So for example, if you as a private investor, you want to buy a stock, right? If you have a market uh, like the one on the right for you, uh, you will need to, um, if you want to buy a lot of stocks, then you see there's not that much volume there. And also you would need to pay a, a, a lot more to get into it. Here, if you buy it and then you change your opinion five seconds later, you lost like one cent a stock. On the other side, it's what, like 10 or something like that. Uh, which, I mean, for a private person, if you buy 10 stocks, is isn't the worst. But if you're like a large institution and you do this all the time, that really is a lot of money you lose that you don't get back. Um, so yeah, like I said, basically based on volume and bit aspect. And the primary role of a market maker, like what Optiver does, is to provide this liquidity. So that is kind of how we work, right? You you always want to buy, you always want to sell. Um, by doing that, we provide liquidity, so it's easier for other market participants 
um, to trade on exchanges. But on the other side, we make money by, yeah, you know, the fair value is somewhere in the middle. We buy for a bit less, we sell for a bit more. Every time somebody trades with us, we make a bit of money. Um, yeah, exactly. And this is again here where, where it works. So, as a market maker, you would put your bid here, you would put your ask there. And then this difference between those two prices is where you have the problem. So, obviously, you might not go like, ah, so what, why wouldn't you just put this as wide as possible? Yeah, right? Then you make the most money. But this is where competition comes in. So, you will see later if you start quoting this, if you put your quotes very wide, somebody will just go like a tiny bit thinner. And then he gets all the money and you know, right? Nobody's going to trade with you. Uh, and that's kind of what's all worked in the real world where there's a steady competition to tighten this, and that then benefits also the wider market because it gets cheaper and cheaper to trade. Um, yeah, let's also talk quickly a bit about order types. Uh, there's a bunch of them. Uh, in this challenge, we're just all, uh, focusing on two limit orders and immediate occurrences. There is uh, an example here. So the idea about the limit order is that you say, I, for example, I'm willing to buy up to this price, and then that order ends up in the order book. Um, that stays there. Whereas in here, you have a cancel. It's like I either trade or it gets canceled. Right? So you trade the volume that, that matches your price, and the remainder will immediately be canceled. It doesn't end up in the order book. So let's take, for example, the, the situation here. Um, we want to buy 20 lots for up to 151 euros, right? You see there's one person, well, potentially multiple ones, but there's three, um, three offers for 150, 15 offers for 151. So in total there are 18 uh, lots, so 18 volume units, uh, that you can trade for this price of 151 that you're willing to, to buy for, right? So if you do a limit order, we will trade these 18 lots, and then we have two remaining here on the bit. They stay in the order book until somebody else uh, trades against them. Does that make sense? So it, it, it stays there, uh, and then you need to manage that. You can cancel it later, somebody else might trade against you. Um, but that is basically how the order book will look like afterwards. Whereas if you do an immediate or cancel, you will just trade these volumes away. Right, you do the, your uh, your trade for 18 lots, but the remaining volume that you didn't get will just be counted. So you get 18 lots that there's nothing in the order book, nothing more. Um, so the idea here is that with an immediate or cancel order, you can kind of ingress, right? You just take out an order that is in the order book, whereas with a limit order that's passive, so you just put it there and somebody else can trade with you whenever they. Think that is uh, what they want to do. Um, yes. Uh, another thing we need to talk about is short selling. So the idea is if you have a stock, or if you do not have a stock and you want to sell it, it doesn't make sense, right? Like, how do you sell something you do not have? In the real world, there's a complicated system to allow for this, uh, where you borrow stocks from other participants and so on and so on. Here we simplify it. So for this challenge, you're allowed to sell things you do not have. Uh, you're allowed to short sell. Um, why that is important, you will see in a second. Um, yeah, let's talk about the challenge itself. Um, so we have uh, we have a longer description here uh, because the slides you can also find on on the web page that we link to. Uh, you can read through that uh, in detail. But the basic idea is that we um, do a basket trading problem. So a basket is a selection of stocks in a single financial instrument. Um, in the real world, you would usually then trade an ETF on it. So for example, if you look at, I don't know, the Euro stocks, right, like the European Big Index, that consists of 50 stocks, and then you have an ETF uh, or basket on these 50 stocks, um, where you basically then get the position in every individual stock within that basket. The idea of why you would want to trade the basket uh, versus a single stock is it kind of spreads the risk out. Let's say you want to invest all your private money, you put it all in one stock, and then the CEO of that stock goes completely insane and like ruins the company, then you're broke, right? If you spread that across 50 stocks, which are like the biggest companies in Europe, a lot less likely to happen. 
right? Maybe one of them screws up, but that all 50 will screw up in the same way. This is all gone very unlikely. And to be honest, then we'll have probably bigger problems. Um, so that is the fundamental idea. So the vast people allows you to get closer to that multiple stocks or things at the same time. Um, yeah, so in this case, um, we have, uh, yeah, so if you want to calculate the price of the basket, you can kind of do it by doing this some kind of weighted average over the prices of the individual stocks. In real cases, that is a bit more difficult than here because you different ones are differently weighted, there are different methods to do this. But uh, in our example, also in the challenge, you will have baskets which always contain only two stocks, and then they are basically weighted 50%, 50%. So the price of the basket is 0.5 right, uh, times the price of stock one plus 0.5 times the price of uh, the other stock, right? And this time, if you have the Google stock, the Amazon stock, you have a basket on that. You can calculate kind of a fair price for the for the basket based on the individual stock prices. Um, so yeah, and if you look at these order books, uh, you have the stocks here on the left in the middle. And you have the basket on the on the right. Do you see which trade you would want to do that? Probably a bit too fast. Um, you can you can look at it like this, right? So let's say you buy uh, you buy Google, you buy Amazon, you buy uh, four each, right? Uh, which gives you then kind of eight in total. Then you spend eight hundred eighty eight dollars, right? It's basically do four times this plus four times this. And on the other side, you would sell it the basket eight times. Um, it's here, right? Eight times this is eight hundred eighty nine sixty. And if you then do the uh, difference between those, you have one euro, uh, one dollar sixty profit. And that is the profit that you make on this trade. Why would you do it like this? The idea is you have offsetting position, right? The basket is defined as the average of the price of Amazon and the price of Google. So if the Google price now goes up, your basket will also go up. Since you bought Google and you sold the basket that came on the one side of your portfolio, you will have a gain on the other side of the portfolio, you will have a loss in exactly the same amount. So totally you're neutral. So what we did is you did, you did the market neutral tra uh, trade, where independent of what the market is going to do in the future, you're not going to lose or make money, right? However, you pocketed one dollar sixty in profit, so you made money, right? That is what what in the what the traders call an arbitrage trade. Right? So it's an inefficiency in the market that you exploit to make the same kind of return on your investment. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Why do we only trade four lots here? The reason is there's only nine that you can sell, right? Only somebody's only uh, willing to buy up to nine. So we cannot uh, sell more than eight to it. Well, we could sell nine, but the problem is you cannot buy like half a Google and half an Amazon. So you could go, ah, then I'm going to buy five Google and four Amazon. But the problem is they will not completely neutral anymore, right? Because then at the Amazon stock moves, for example, you're not getting exactly the offsetting uh, return on your other position in your portfolio, right? So it's really about making sure that you have always the correct ratio. You always need to have two to one um, for both of them. Um, yeah, and this is exactly this kind of example. So let's say you have you are short, so you sold five, you already sold five Amazon, you bought ten. Of the basket, think about what would happen if the price of Google would increase by one percent. Then you lose some money here, right? But here you gain the equivalent money, right? Because it's ten times one point five times one percent of the price, so it's exactly offset uh, by definition. So yeah, this is this is a big problem, right? And the, in our challenge, the one of the core ideas is that you need to hatch, that you need to stay hatched. And that is exactly this process of having offsetting positions that is called hatching. Um, that is the idea here. Um, 
Yeah, and, and that is basically our challenge. Uh, you will find two ETFs uh, in, in OptiBook. Uh, both of those ETFs consist of two stocks. Um, one of the ETFs is based on two fossil fuel companies. One is based on two green energy companies. Uh, the fossil fuel market is a lot more established, it's more liquid. So there is a lot of liquidity provided in the book there. And we want you to provide some liquidity in this other market, in the green energy market. Um, and we always really recommend to do this challenge in two parts. Where part one is this kind of trade I just showed you. So where you look at the other books, you look for opportunities where stuff is mispriced, where you can make this uh, riskless trade to arbitrage money. So you sell on one side, you buy on the other side. Um, and then only in the second part, start to uh, do actual market making. So in the first part, you would probably want to use immediate or partial orders. So as discussed earlier, earlier, the ones that do not stay in the order book, so you just make a trade, and if you don't get it, it gets canceled. Um, in the second part, you will need to use limit orders to stay in the book to provide your prices. Um, why do we recommend to do it like this? Talking to the problem might seem straightforward to you, but getting this actually to work and getting it right is often a lot more difficult. So if you focus first on understanding the basic problem with this arbitrage, uh, aggressive, uh, trader, you will be way more successful in the second part. It will be less overwhelming. Because once you have orders in the book, people will trade against you, you will get the sign when in position, you don't know what to do with them, um, you will be completely lost. So really, really as a strong recommendation, focus first on part one, and then once you feel like, yeah, I know what's going on, then you go over to part two. Um, if you want to take part in this, you will need to have it, right? You have to simulate the exchange uh, on, on uh, Optigo. Uh, if you want to do that, you need to join our Slack channel, uh, post a quick message there, and then, yeah, one of us will give you the credentials so that you can log in. There's like a cloud environment where everything is prepared for you. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, either ask now, obviously. Or come to our booth afterwards. Uh, there will also be a talk by Julian tomorrow morning at 10, right? Uh, where we go a bit more about like the history of technology trading and kind of how modern markets work. Yeah, and then hope you're gonna have fun, hope you're gonna join our challenge. And if you have any questions, please come by. We want to move